My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, we upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. Yeah. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, members of the Pentecost family, I have the greatest pleasure now to give you the fundamental reasons seven to account for the theme 2023, repositioning the local church for maximum impact in the nations. Repositioning the local church for maximum impact in the nations. Now, we have tried to bring an excerpt in the brochure that you are containing, you have, because we want you to interact with it and use it. Because understanding the theme is key. So you will be able to love it and then teach it. And so if you turn to your brochure, which page is that? Yes, page Eight. I have just inserted one or two, but uh, if you follow me closely, it is just as you have in your brochure. Now, this theme is premised on two scriptural texts: First Thessalonians two nineteen and twenty, and Colossians two six and seven. Colossians two six and seven. The five-year vision of the church, the vision 2023, has been expressed in the overarching theme, possessing the nations, that is equipping the church to transform every sphere of society with values and principles of the kingdom of God. The fundamental test or the foundational test for the possessing the nation's agenda is Ephesians 3.10. Ephesians 3.10. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. His intent, God's intent for creating the church is that through the church, his manifold wisdom will be made known to principalities and powers, rulers of darkness. The overall goal of this vision it's a church where members go to possess their nations by transforming every worldview, thought, and behavior with values, principles, and lifestyle of the kingdom of God. And as a result, bringing many to Christ. So the overall goal of the Vision 2023 is a church where members go to transform their spheres. The vision has been summarized in 25 commitments. 25 commitments. Now, when you you have you go to the we have um, a copy of the vision, and then you go to page 12 to 16, the commitments are there. The commitments are there. To achieve these commitments, the church has adopted three-prone approach as our strategy in the short medium and long term that to achieve our objective that's one equipping members of the church with their required resources now if you want members to go and transform the society you have to equip them so they will be able to go the second one is strengthening and realigning existing institutions and structures of the church to serve as implementation units and to provide the enabling environment for the achievement of the vision 2023. So we needed to make some changes, introduce some ministries to enable us achieve our target. And so the same church, but we needed to realign and we strengthened 
some of the things we do. The third prone approach is transforming society, sending our members out as channels through which God's divine resources will flow to meet the needs and helplessness of the society and partner with the government for community and national transformation. Now, how do we come out by our themes, annual theme? How do we come by our annual themes? This three-prone approach vis-a-vis -vis the 25 commitments of the vision and the leading of the spirit has for the past five years informed our annual themes. So the commitment, what we, have, we are committed to do, and then the strategy is to plus the leading of the Holy Spirit, who is the owner of the church, leads us into the visions. So these visions have, the visions so far have been, one, I will build my church, a glorious church to possess the nations, a glorious church revived to possess the nations, equipping the church as an army to possess the nations and repositioning the local church for maximum impact in the nations. These annual themes, the annual themes we bring, are steps towards achieving our targets. Thus, each theme builds on the other. So, each theme builds on the other, leading us to our targets. The theme 2023, repositioning the local church for maximum impact in the nations, represents an intentional effort to strengthen the local church, an intentional effort to strengthen the local church as the center for mobilizing the grassroots and equipping members for the possessing the nation's agenda. If you watch, we have not departed from the church, church, church. The themes that we have dealt with has church, church, church. We know that the church is our strongest resources, most important of them. Because as we want to possess the nations, we are possessing with the church. And so this one is also an intentional effort to strengthen the local church. Now, reposition means... A sincere introspective introspection of your of your of yourself despite the appellations the world pours on you now I'm trying to touch on the reposition what do we actually mean by that and we are saying that reposition means shall we read together taking a sincere introspective introspection of yourself despite the appellations the world pours on you now everybody is saying pentecost 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 but don't let us glory in that don't let us they may not be telling us even the truth but reposition means that look into yourself take an introspective view of yourself and then don't just glory in what people are saying about you reposition means being careful that the light in you is not darkness. This one, you can't find it in what you are holding. So you have to make notes alongside. Reposition means being careful that the light in you is not darkness. This is scripture. Sometimes you may think that you have the light, but the time you say, Jack, Jesus said, it is darkness. As to when it turned to, the light turned to darkness, he didn't tell us. But he says that be careful that the light you think you have it's not darkness. Reposition is an indication of life. When we say reposition, we don't think that the church has collapsed. Reposition is an indication of life because the one doing the reposition is self-aware. Yeah. The person is self-aware. That is why he's saying reposition. If the person is self-aware, then the person is not dead. Reposition is an indication that there is life in the church. If you listen to the song our sisters, uh, the VOP sang, ripping, ripping, it means that we are aware of what is going on. We are aware of the attraction. 
So if we can also revamp, we also create space for that to keep our young people around. Repositioning means there is life. Repositioning is to rebrand, to revamp. You rebrand to revamp, to rebrand, to rediscover. That is reposition. Reposition is a holy zeal to take over all available space. Reposition is a holy zeal to take over all available space. Reposition is to carefully, shall we read this one together? Ready, go. Reposition is to carefully guard and hand over tried and tested landmarks. We have to try and carefully hand over. The church is in about the fourth generation. And some of the things that has made the church of Pentecost, the church of Pentecost, excuse me to say, even some of us ministers do not really understand. That is why we have decided that we will teach the core values and even teach the rules of conduct of the church of Pentecost and remind ourselves of the covenant God has with this church. We need to remind ourselves. And these core values, they have to be carefully handed over. Otherwise, there will come another generation who do not know what it means to be a minister or a member in the Church of Pentecost. Reposition is an indication of a test and hunger for excellence. We don't have to be comfortable with the status quo. There is a race that we must run. There are victories to be won. We need to go for excellence. That is why we are repositioning. Reposition is a desire to achieve the goal for which Christ has called this church and has called you as an individual. We need to rekindle ourselves to attain the goal. That is why Paul says that I want to know him. I want to know him and the fellowship of his suffering. I want to attain the goal. So he's trying to reposition himself. Say, I want to know him. I've known him. I've known him, but I want to know him because the death of God, no one can fathom. You cannot say, I've known him enough. No. Reposition means that we want to achieve the goal for which he has called us. Reposition means a burning desire for a better future. Reposition means a burning desire for a better future. Ladies and gentlemen, to sum up all this reposition, shall we just lift our heads and read this one? Reposition is for maximum impact. Reposition is for maximum impact. So this team repositioning of the church for maximum impact in the nations is a follow-up on the 2022 theme, equipping the church as an army to possess the nations. As have been, you have already been educated, we said that the teams build on one another. And so once we took the theme, uh, equipping the church as an army, we are still looking at the 2023 theme from the perspective of a soldier, of an army. So we are building on the 2020. This one builds on the 2022 theme. Like an army statical unit, the battalion. The theme 2023 deems the local church as a statical unit. The place where we plan, the place where we unleash people to battle, the local church. We deem it as crucial in the effort at possessing the nations. This is because to maintain unit cohesion and will to fight as an army to possess the nations, there is a need to reposition the tactical unit in this respect, the local church, to keep the fighting strength up. We are not saying that we are not fighting, but we want to keep it up. That is why we are repositioning the local church. Afro, I'm not here, bread, ground cancer, So as we, we are forcing to possess the nation, 
the same local church, the same church that we, we are using to possess the nations, we have to refill, redo for maximum impact. A local church then will be more vibrant when we concentrate and re quicken it. A serious threat to the enemy and afford us the greater success in possessing the nation's agenda. For the strength of the church, now listen to me, lies in the local church where real practical ministry and congregational life exist. When I was made an area head, I understood this very well. Because when I was a district pastor, I was not too far from where the action is. I wasn't. Not at all from where the action was. But when I became an area head, I realized that anytime that we close service, people go to their pastors and they would not come to me. So I decided that I have to descend and get involved myself. Otherwise, nobody, because at that level, there is no church. And at this level where myself and Apostle Kumila V and Brother Berkwin, <laughs> we are sitting, there is no church. It's only papers. Yeah. Papers and troubles are ominous. <laughs> I was telling people that when you are, you are elevated to be a leader, you are elevated to solve difficult problems. You answer tough questions and solve unimaginable problems. <laughs> because if the problem skips, if the presiding elder is not able to manage it, and then the district pastor says, let us push it to the area head. And the area has six if it's okay, so let us push it to the head of his. By the time the problem comes, no one. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's not just about praising God that I am this, because we are going to solve tough problems and answer difficult questions. So that is what we do. But at that level, there is no church. So when you are an area head and you don't get involved, you'll be alone. You'll be alone. So I decided to get involved. When there's a, a wedding, I'll go there. Adore, I'll be there. And then joint service, I'm there. Then visiting. I'll call the pastor and then I'll go with him to visit his key people. Visit the bandsmen and the young men just to connect with the youth. And by so doing, I dissolve myself into the system. If you remain here, you'll be alone. Yeah. And then when you're alone, 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 and then you retire, you'll be alone, cry. <laughs> yeah, because you never deserve, because by this time nobody knows you. Yeah, when you are even coming, the people are afraid because they saw you as an apostle. So you retire, and then the apostle is coming, and they move away. But if they saw you as a friend, you still have that kind of joy. Yeah, let, let them see you as a friend. These are titles that we wear. One day we'll hand them over to those who gave them to us. So let us be careful. <laughs> so if you don't know, let me tell you before you get there. Yeah. You see, one thing is that our, our fathers, the area has, we have taken the, their strength from them. When we say strength, we are not just talking about the physical, the physic, uh, the, the physical strength you have. When you have 30,000 people, you oversee 30,000 people, that alone is strength. When you retire, we take all the 30,000 people from you, and then we'll give it to someone. So if you don't take care, you wake up in the morning, you are not aware, you'll be calling the pickup driver. Meanwhile, we took it from you yesterday. <laughs> you see, you see how it will be like. So you don't have the pickup now that we, we collect our vehicle and then you have to jump into your car and you compare it with what we, we have given you. You only have to say that, Father, I thank you that when I had the opportunity, I did my best. Yeah. Otherwise, when you see the one who took over from you driving the car, say, can make car anyway. <laughs> Are we together? Are you here? Oh, I'm preaching to the retirees. Yeah. One day we shall all go there. And so let us try and then know what will happen in future. Any good and a purposeful life 
begins with the end in view. You must know the end from the beginning so you can walk majestically and happily into what God has prepared for you. Are we together? Yes. So when we reposition the local church, it to be strengthened to ensure strong cohesion or cohesive church as an army, the local church should be in good shape in terms of attendance to church and involvement in all church activities, amongst others. It's, it's not nice. And then we shouldn't continue as pastors to say that our members run shift. If they run shift, do something about it. But they, they shouldn't run shift. Recently, I was going to preach at PRWC Atomic and this elder of mine called me, who is also a friend, that I should come to him immediately. Quite an elderly fellow. And so I, I asked, why? Because we have to go to church. But the thought of the Good Samaritan just came to me. And so I thought that I shouldn't rush to church if this old man needs me. And then I called again. Then he gave the phone to his young man who is attending to him that if I inquire why, he should tell me that I should come immediately. He should just say that. That was my order. And so I decided to pass by. After I finished dealing with him, I was late. So I needed to navigate through Domi. Those of you know Accra. And then when I got to the market, I closed my eyes. The whole place is flooded. People are selling. And it was time that 71.2% peak Ghanaians, if who claim to be Christians, should have been in church. And I knew some of our members were there. I knew. The thought of that kept lingering until I entered the church house. We shouldn't say they ran shift. It is our responsibility to keep the fire in them so that they will long for eternal things. They will long for eternal things. So we need to work hard at them. To achieve, this is to achieve by ensuring that the local check is tactically deployed. That is, if you really want to see the church revamp, we have to tactically deploy them. For the church, the fighting echelon represents our involvement in the various outreaches aimed at taking territories for the Lord. The support echelon is the strength of the local church ministry. So as we go, we still have the local church ministry, which will give us strength to go. In sustaining the fighting power, so as to continually supply the needed resource for victory. The need to strengthen the rear echelon is clearly pictured in the case of David as one, at one time when the lack of support echelon to protect the rear led to his rear being exploited by the Amalekites raiders in Ziklag. Now David has run to join this king of the Philistines. Then they were going to battle Israel. And David volunteered to be part of the Philistines' army. You see, in, in army, they don't recruit people who are not citizens. Because you need loyalty. And so while David and his people were working with the king's army, as part of the Philistines' army, the commanders inquired, who are these people? And then the king said, it is David and his young men. Then the commander said, why? Why? Is he a citizen? Why? Then the king said, oh, he has been here with me for a while. And the way he loves me, and the people said, king, please lift your head. When the battle goes sour and we are killing his people, you give him the opportunity to finish all of us because he is in our midst. So let him go back. So the king took the counsel. By the time they got to Ziklag, where they were sojourning, the place was on fire. 
So they had to inquire of the Lord and chase these raiders to go and then bring back as many of the things that they can recover. Then, whilst they were going, some of the young men were, said they were a bit tired, so they will remain behind. Others were not so pleased with their action. But David asked them to remain behind. When they went and they recovered the plunder, or brought by their wives and then recovered whatever they took away from them, and some plunder, when they came to Ziklag, they, some of the young men were refusing to give those who stayed behind some of what they have gained from the battle because they think that these ones were lazy or they are lazy people and then david said no give them some they covered the back and from that day on david made that a legislation so that in battle in israel so far as david is concerned all the men do not go for battle all the men do not go for battle some should remain behind because of that experience so as we are possessing the nations and making inroads into the enemy's territory we have to take care of the rear check whether the church is in right shape because the enemy can use that as an advantage whilst we are busily possessing the nations entering the ghettos you enter the church and by the time we say jack he has made what is our foundation week have i communicated yeah but we also have Joab and Abisha. They led the troops. Joab saw that there was challenge. Some there was battle lines in front of him and battle lines behind him. And as a commander and someone who is a human being, you couldn't possibly fight those ahead of him and then fight those behind him. So he decided that he would let his he would take those ahead of him and his brother will lead the troops to deal with those behind him so that the front and the back is effectively covered are we together and so we have to be mindful of where our strength is the local church and work very hard at it so that we can win both at in our outreaches and win both having a solid church that is full of worship in view of this or of this discourse we seek to reposition the local church for maximum impact in the nations. This team places a great deal of emphasis on the local church and reposition her as a formidable army unit to ensure the success, the successful mission of the church in possessing the nations for Christ. In repositioning the local church, we shall be working on some key areas based on principles of war to include morale when we say morale we are talking about church health people should come to church happy and then they should decide to come again the next day or by next week the morale must be up church health we must also look at security protect churches core values and culture we must protect it mass and concentrate Concentrating power, focus on efforts on ministry priority in the local church. As we equip them, we must unleash them to do that which Christ has asked us to do. Objective, set objective goal. We shouldn't just be checking. We must have timelines. We must have goals and targets that we need to achieve so that we will know that the church is growing from strength to strength. Then we also have to be mindful of unit of command that is provide strong leadership at all levels of the local church up to the squares. Provide strong leadership up to the squares. Then surprise and maneuver. All this is military term because we are building on the equipping the church as an army. The surprise and maneuver. We want to give space for surprise and maneuver. That is make room for innovations. You see. We want to challenge you, young ones, to innovate, bring new ideas into how we do church. Now, when there is some specific thing in your district that you need to deal with, you have to find ways of combining the team and then dealing with the issue at hand in your local assembly. So we make room for surprise and maneuver. 
uh, because there are certain things that uh, are unique to a particular setting and you need to deal with that consult with your area head and bring new things on board we foresee that when the local church is well positioned it can be launched to make a difference in a hopeless world our local churches must be strengthened to equip and sent out send out their members and the mem and the members must go and take the nations for christ as envisioned in vision 2023 to achieve the desired set goals under the 2023 theme a pattern of teaching will be adapted guided by some selected topics to help reposition the local church for maximum impact in possessing the nations these topics are so we are will be treating some topics don't just listen to them and then when you go home uh, you preach on other topics try and then stay in this so that we can all arrive at our target goal recently we had the chance to be so worried the christmas convention was just around the corner and then some pastors a week to the christmas convention were having retreats and breakthroughs and then we chance on one of them it is a central church and so we needed to ask well, what the pastor meant what was the topic yeah. breaking breaking the horns of please the pastor help me <laughs> Breaking the horns of ancestral something, something. Breaking the horns. Breaking the horns of setbacks. You see where I share. You see? Once we have good topics that will bring like breaking the horns of what setbacks? Shall we rise and sing this song and I'll continue? My fate has found a resting place, not in Levi's, not sure you most of you know that i'm going to talk about it is enough that jesus died and that he died for me what about this break what horns are you going to break the man has broken it on the cross let's teach our people well don't let us reduce christianity to superstition and calendar superstition we want the people to be beggars to be beggarly always depending on you the pastor what horns are they going to break you think jesus hung on the tree for naught? he destroyed every horn on the cross Hallelujah. it is enough that jesus died and that he died for us preach good gospel you see what you put in is what you get if you create all this fear in your people you can't stop them from going to the prayer camps you can't stop them what horns? What horns? Now, this song says it is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. It is enough. Everything we need is in this Jesus and the cross. Shall we lift up our hands now? Shall we pray that God will open our eyes of understanding? And as ministers, let us make the word of God our rule. Let us make it our root is enough. We don't need anointing oil. We don't need waters. We don't need anything. Let us pray that God will help us. Pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ.
this morning. Let us pray. We'll pray for those who have needs. But we don't have to create the impression that there are some homes that they are still holding on to. In the name of Jesus. Shall we please have our seats? Let us try and go simple and go by the power of the word. There is nothing that we need. We need more of Christ. That's all. Apostle True was teaching us about being rooted in Christ. Whilst he was teaching us, my mind was going following the roots. Now, it is, it is scripture that you shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. It is potentially for all of us. But our ability to do that, it is how far our taproot has gone in him. So let's encourage them to get rooted in Christ. And the yoke will be broken. If they are yokes, it will be broken. It will be broken because of the fatness. Now the yoke is supposed to hold a bullock's neck. Now, if the, the master of this bullock or the owner of the bullock decides not to remove the yoke and he leaves it there but this bullock is growing in fatness is growing big 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 his neck growing big will one day break the yoke that is why the the other version says that the fat because of the fatness the yoke will be broken you teach members to grow in the Lord. And as they are growing in the Lord, if there's any yoke, the yoke will be broken. The yoke will be broken so they can even break other people's yoke. But don't put fear in them. So let's pay attention to this test that we want you to deal with. So that by the end of the day, we'll be able to get closer to our target for 2023. One of the topics we are going to treat is this one. Stoking the fire of the Holy Spirit, living in the fear of God in the local church. Now we want to live in the fear of God in the local church. As for the Holy Spirit, he's at work. But some of the things that stop him is where there is no fear of God. When we remove the no fear of God and we live in the fear of God, the fire will, will be ablaze again. The local church as a family, the local church as a family so that we love one another and work with one another the local church upholding the values of godliness the local church upholding the values of godliness or holiness sacrificial giving and tithing sacrificial giving and tithing we need to teach area heads should be able to teach sacrificial giving when you are a pastor teach tithing when you are teaching tithing and giving, um, don't think that the people will think that maybe you want you are you are demanding money from them. If you you do, you, you are a money grabber, they know. They know. They can even pick it from the way you teach. They know. So don't. It is your duty to teach about tithing and sacrificial giving. Area has. It's your duty. Teach. The members ask you how to take care of ministers. Teach them. It is your duty. Teach them. When I was in my first station, any time that we went to town, to Takrade, I'll come back with some money. At least I'll come back with some money. So I was wondering why the people, individuals, will be chasing you and giving you something. And but So I inquired. And then they told me that two area heads, one took over from another, as is Apostle Esiama, and then Apostle Nati. And this elder said, they consistently taught on giving. So once they consistently taught on giving, the people responded to it. They responded to it. So when you do that, even our coffers will be a bit free. The people will manage the affairs of the church without compulsion. And then tithing. 95% plus of our earnings comes from tithe. So you need to teach it. 
Don't just say that it is Sunday. Take your tithe, lift it up. People may lift their, their, their hands up, but it, is, it may not be tight. They may lift their envelopes up, but it may not be tight. We have assumed that they understand, but let us teach it. Even if they do, let us teach. They will do much more. I went to preach somewhere in Kofodia when I was there on a Lord's Supper day. And this time I decided to teach on communion. And when I finished, I gave the space for people to ask questions. <laughs> so the first question was, uh, uh, was a bit surprising. I never knew that somebody would ask me this question in the Church of Pentecost. But they asked me. Then the next person lifted their hand. This man was not a question. He was going to tell me something. It says Osofu. She's teaching me that the laws, the communion, is the last supper. So when you eat, take the communion, you don't eat again. It's supposed to be the last meal. Because said the last supper. Now she was not asking questions, she was telling me. Then when I understood what she was trying to say, I said, so have you taken the communion before? She says, no, because 10 o'clock. How can I eat? <laughs> How can I eat at 10 o'clock and not eat again? I stood there and I was short of words. I looked at her face. And then she said, also for Ongasa. <laughs> Ongasa. I, 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 I was dumbfounded. All that I said is that when you close, you see me. But before she would say that, I said, where did you get this teaching from? So they have been teaching it. So where? She is getting them from the radio. And because she wants to stay safe, because she can't take last meal at 10 a.m., she has decided not to offend God and offend her stomach. Just stay safe. And all these people are amongst our members. If you don't teach them well and assume that they understand what it means to come to the lost table, we may be making a huge mistake. So what is the next one? The local church in evangelism. This one, we have to push it. Now, the members are excited with this one. The next one, shall we shout it? Ah, visitation in the local church. Visitation in the local. They are so much excited about that. What that means is that they want to see us in their homes. They want us to be, they want us to contact them. They want us to show concern that we love them. We love them. Then, this one. Raising family altars. To strengthen the local church, lessons from my friends, the Puritans. Number eight. Now, if you're able to raise family altars, it will strengthen the local church. Number eight. Encouraging personal devotions and small group prayers meetings to strengthen the local church. Now, we want to encourage small group prayer meetings and personal devotions. Personal devotions. Most of us have been product of this small group prayer meeting. We have stayed as friends since the beginning. Now, yes, was asking me who is going to lead the prayer. He said, have you told eh, Apostle Asante? He, he asked a question and then he answered the question. Because I'm going to ask him to come and lead the prayer. But any time that I sit down, I want him to come and lead the prayer. Do you know why? It's not because he does well than all of them. Because we have been praying from our youth together. So I, I know how he's going to push it. So I don't have any worries about how he's going to push it. We have been praying together. Praying together. And then we also had prayer qua, class together. Our choir was called Akops. And then I don't know, his, I've forgotten his dear name, Atoforukrum. And then we were also in the same district, but somewhere else. 
we have been moving together. And today, look at us. So let's encourage the young people. Don't let us be afraid of what they are doing. Because little by little, the young shall grow. Let us teach them. If you find any fault with them, teach them. When they come to church and they are jumping, you don't stop them in their tracks. But find good time and correct them. Teach them how to dance decently. Because if you don't teach them, they will not be able to conform. So let's, let's love them and bring them together and encourage prayer groups. In the churches where we have all gone, we have tried to kind of have myself, I will always make sure that I have a key to the church house. Even if it were a classroom, I'll have a key to that. I'll go to the presiding area, and normally the, these padlocks, they have about three keys. I'll take one, and I'll pledge him that everything will be safe. Then I'll organize the young men who close church at 9 o'clock, and by 10 o'clock, we are back in church, praying, interceding for the church. So somebody will teach that. I'll raise my voice here. So please let us encourage that. Then, in addition to these topics, because we want to intentionally hand over the core values to the next generation, we have decided that from January to March, we shall hold Bible studies on the core values and the rules of conduct. But we shall also have an opportunity in this conference for the General Secretary to throw some light on some of them. And so open up to receive. We will be talking about deepening the Pentecost brand. The theme 2023, repositioning the local church for maximum impact in the nations, is premised on the following scriptural verses. 1 Thessalonians 2, 19 and 20, Colossians 2, 6 and 7. I shall now turn briefly to expand on these scriptures in relation to the theme. I've, I'll take the first one, 1 Thessalonians 2. For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we will glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when he comes. Is it not you? Indeed, you are our glory and joy. The ultimate reward for Paul's ministry was not money. It was not prestige or fame, but believers whose lives have been transformed by God through the preaching of the good news. Likewise, the theme for 2023 is aimed at ministers, officers, and every individual in the church understanding and appreciating the fact that our greatest resource as a church is in our members and that we should do all in our power to keep, love, nature, and equip them for the tax of possessing the nations. And that no, mem mat no matter what ministry God has given us, our highest reward and greatest joy should be those whom God, who to be, should be those who come to believe in Christ and join us in fellowship in our local church. We have to love them. Repositioning the local church, therefore, will mean creating the in needed atmosphere for them to build up and make and be made sharper for the tax of influencing society with the principles, values, and lifestyles of the kingdom of God. I'll take the second one. Colossians 2. So then, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thanksgiving. Our brother, Apostle Etru, treated, um, gave a message on this, as well as our brother, Dr. Della Kwampa. He also gave a message on this. When you contact the Pen TV, you can have a copy to buy. Fantastic exposition from different angles. Now, in the face of the rival teachings by the false teachers and their enticing arguments, Paul calls the local, the Colossians back to the foundational teachings they received when they first became Christians. He exhausts them to continue to be rooted and built up in it so that they, so that empty philosophical speculations 
that stands opposed to the gospel does not sway them from the truth in Christ. In Mark the same way, we shall be intentional in grounding our members in the Lord. We shall build the, their confidence in the gospel of Christ, which is the power of God that saves and unleash them into the world to be channels through whom God's grace will flow to bless humanity. We intend by this theme to make the local assembly ready to combat every thought, argument, and pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God and take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Now, let me conclude. May the Lord continue to be with us and grant us the needed grace to carry this theme through to its desired end as we reposition the local church for maximum impact. Amen. So I've taken the trouble to try and give you the reason behind this theme. I hope that you have caught something. And because it is in your brochure, please ponder over it. And then we want to encourage the area heads that are the apostolization, take this for the opening. You have to let the officers know the rationale. So all of us will be treating the rationale for the first day, the opening. The area head will teach. Either the one coming or you yourself, who, the one who is hosting, will manage that. Shall we now invite my brother and my friend. Come and lead them. Yes, move. Move with the cloud. Move. Oh, the cloud. Even as we sing this song, I want you to get yourself ready. Get yourself into the mood where the Holy Spirit will begin to touch you. Because God needs us for this thing to work. He needs to work in our lives for God to use us to honor his name. So even as we sing, open up your heart and your spirit. I believe the Spirit God will begin to fill you. He will begin to strengthen you. He will begin to encourage you. Verse 10, as it was read, his intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God. God wants a people. Press that wisdom, his greatness, the knowledge about him. And the people he needs is the people that he has called out to the church. So it is we that the Lord needs. So that anything that God wants to give to the world, God will use us to bring it to pass. And that is why we need to make ourselves available. And allow the spirit of God to touch us. His intent was that now through the church... The manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus. 
So this is God's eternal purpose. Something that God planned before the creation of the world. It has been with God ever since. But God needs an opening by which this will be known to the world. What a privilege. What a great thing that God has done for us. What a love. Shall we be on our feet? The cloud of glory is in his name for the fact that he has called us to be channels through whom he will honor his name the channel through whom the greatness of God will be revealed to the world and even unto the realms that are in the heavens shall we begin to pray shall we begin to pray thank God pray and thank God and as you pray and thank God open up yourself open up your spirit for God to begin to touch you father we want to bless your name father we want to honor you we thank you today we exalt you we thank you for this position that God you have placed us oh God this is so great this is so amazing the father as you need a people, human beings, Father, to show forth your greatness, it pleases you that it shall be we. And Lord, we want to bless your name. We honor you, God. Lord, we want to bless your name. in the name of Jesus, Sutayanda la 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 ba. Le ma shikayande, le ma ma sutayanda la ba ba ba. Le ma musikata. Let the dew of glory bring us, bring us. Yeah. <laughs> 
us here to reposition us, to strengthen us, to empower us, yes. so that the, the, the various responsibilities that he has assigned us will be able to accomplish for his glorification. Yes. And this is the beginning of the conference. Your attitude towards the way you hear the word of God. Your attitude towards the prayer that you are going to pray. Will determine how the Lord is going to fill you. Mm. But the truth is that God is ready. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. The truth is that God is ready. Yes. He is looking for a people. Mm. He wants a people that he wants to use mm. to change our world. Yes. The song that we sang earlier on said, now that we are in the world, there is going to be a change in the world. And that is deep. Once I am here, and once you are here, there must be a transformation. Our world must change. That is why some of us, we become confused when we hear about the 70 plus percent of Ghanaians being Christians, yet we are not seeing any change. But today we have the opportunity. Yes. God wants to fill us. Yes. That before we leave this conference, he will turn us onto some special people. Yes. We will become supernatural people. But he by us is going to turn the church around for his name to be honored. Shall we lift up our hands? Let the deal of Thank you. We power of God. He's going to use us to reposition the local churches. And we need his energy. In the name of Jesus, let us contend, 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 in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lamo Satire. Now we want to pray and present the theme for the year into the hands of God. We want God to breathe on the team. Already, God has caused this team to be all over in the church. And the hearts of the members are open to receive. But we want to pray that the Spirit of God will continue to breathe up over it. Amen. That even as we begin to talk about this thing, God will cause it to sink Amen. into hearts, into spirits. Yes. God will bring the understanding yes. that is needed, yes. that His name will be honored. So we are bringing the thing before God. Let's pray that God will cause us to do the work and the purpose for which He has brought it. Ba 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 
Mataya, Haraba Babayanda, La 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 Ba, Le Mashuko Konde Le 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 Le, In the name of Jesus, Lord of Lords, La Ba 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 Santa La 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 Ba, La Ba 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 Sikataya La 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 Ba, Le Mashuko Konde Le 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 Le, Le Masuwa La La Ba Ba Ba, In the name of Jesus, In the name of Jesus, Father, that you be for for this thing, that is. As we begin to share, your name will be honored in the name of Jesus. Lord of us, seek a tie But not only for the members. Let's pray that God will cause this thing to sink deep within us as ministers who are going to talk about it. Let's pray that God will give us the understanding. The rationale has been given to us. Let's pray for insight. Let's pray for understanding of the rationale that will be able to carry this team along and anagong. Oh, la basuta yan la la baba. Le ma shikotan de re re bo. La ma ma suta yan la 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 ba. Hi ba lo ma suan de le 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 be. La bo sata yan la 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 ba. Shakataya. Shall we be seated? Revive me, oh Lord. you enjoyed this video and I believe that you were blessed if um, you were blessed by this video make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend and also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message if you have any question please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you and also if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ, ask the Lord and personal Savior. I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.